start. Um, we lost Rob a while ago to the secretary of the community board. We lost Joy um, to be treasurer of the community board. And unfortunately, we also um, lost Marvin Goodman, who was a member of our committee. And um, we're very sad that uh, he passed and he will be missed greatly. Uh, all his little anecdotes and, and uh, mm -hmm. little stories of uh, history that he knew that most people don't. Uh, he was fun at some times and uh, <laughs> other times he was a little hard to take, but he was a lo lovely man. He, when we were in person uh, meetings, um, he brought me home many times because I don't drive at night. So uh, we did get to know each other and uh, I will definitely miss him. Um, I want to um, start by uh, uh, approving the minutes of December 22nd, um, which um, dealt with the new uh, proposal of a school on um, Van Cortland Park South and Putnam. I think it's place. It, Marty, is it place? Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, on, on Van Cortland Park South, uh, the STA Avenue. Avenue? Yes. Okay, great. Um, oh, you're really on top of it. And um, so I, I hope that everyone has read the minutes. Um, I tried to squeeze all of it into um, a shorter uh, version and um, I'd like to have a motion to approve them. So move. And seconded. Second. Okay, uh, anyone against uh, approving them? And uh, anyone abstaining? So uh, we'll deem them uh, approved. Um, I'm going to go out of uh, the agenda um, slightly uh, because um, yesterday um, I became aware of a situation over at the uh, JFK um, complex, which um, houses, as you may know, uh, eight schools. Um, and uh, the one that uh, this uh, child uh, attends is the Bronx Engineering and Technical School uh, Academy. And um, unfortunately he had a run in with uh, another child and he was beaten up and uh, the parents sent a email to the um, community board, which then was forwarded to me. Um, I did some research and so did the community board and uh, we have spoken to the police. Um, the captain, uh, Gervin, um, sent a, um, um, sent a uh, response. Uh, there were supposed to be two um, youth officers here this evening, but we only got to them like about four o'clock this afternoon and that was too short a period of time. They did just couldn't come. So I'm just gonna read the, um, the response from uh, Captain uh, Gervin and I think it explains everything. Um, I spoke to the 50th Precinct Detective Squad and they have a case for robbery student on student which is being actively investigated by Detective Wood. We have daily patrols by our uniformed officers and supervisors daily along with our youth uh, coordinators, I guess, who are at uh, dismissal. Uh, their focus is Tippett Avenue and West 230th Street, which is several blocks away from the occurrence. The school safety division is specifically assigned to the schools also and are 
present for entry and dismissals. We will continue to visit the schools and confer with our school safety division. So that is his statement. Uh, I also spoke to the principal, uh, Mr. House, um, who uh, gave me some information and, and uh, I'd like to call on uh, Paulette now, uh, not Paulette, um, Kendra, uh, to uh, make a little statement as far as the uh, situation is concerned and then we'll um, chime in with, with the information we received. Okay, so I just want to make a quick correction. It wasn't a one-on-one. -on -one. It was actually my son, Joshua, and my nephew, Marcus, was walking to where I normally park to pick them up. It was about eight, between eight and ten children that was chasing them and jumped onto them in the middle of the street. And my son, the reason why he ran that direction because he said he knew I was gonna be sitting there parking. And if he could just get me in his line of sight that, you know, he'll be right. okay. Thankfully he did, because once I seen them, I jumped out the car and, you know, kind of chased them away. So um, I did go back to the school to make a report. And that's when I was told that this wasn't the first incident. When all of this happened, there was no patrol out there. Even the week after it happened, there was no patrol because my sister and I was able to drive by there and still see the young men still out there into the same location. And I've taken pictures and I sent the emails to Detective Woods. So I'm not sure if they just got the patrol there, but there's, there was none. My children, including my nephew, is still being dropped off every morning at the door and still being picked up because they do not feel safe. I don't blame them. Uh, this happened on uh, January 14th at dismissal 14th. time. Yes. Yes. So we have and the um, school, so a few of the students that um, ha was involved in it lives into the Marble Hill projects. Right. And um, one is said that he goes to Kennedy, the one that I sent, into the email, he goes to Kennedy, but we're not sure which school in Kennedy. He's not in Beta, Bronx Engineering. He's not in that division, mm -hmm. he another mm -hmm. one. And then the one that started everything, he, they're saying goes to Intech. So I'm not sure, you know, if anybody reached out, you know. I, I tried to get the principal, but he was in right. the meeting. So, but tomorrow I'm gonna try it again. Okay. Excuse me, Sylvia. Hi, can you hear me, Sylvia? Yes. I, um, Officer Sala has joined us and he, he raised his hand from the 50th precinct. Good evening. Who, who is? Officer Officers. Sala from the 50th Oh, precinct. oh, 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 yeah. okay. Uh, could we um, hold you off for just a minute until sure. uh, Kendra is finished? Of course. We just started. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead, so, um, Kendra. The other parent, Monique, she's on the line as well. So she picks them up as well um, from there. You know, I've messaged Detective Woods and I've gotten back the feedback the day of, but aside from that, it, it just feel like it was stalled. My thing is, my hope is that my children are the last children that have to go through this. I, I don't want it, I didn't want it to be news cameras running, God forbid somebody die. I'm trying to prevent any of this. And then there was talk because we've even gotten threats, you know, over the phone, they found my kid's number and they even threatened. And I sent that information to the police department as well. Um, I don't want the retaliation between the children. I want it to be handled the correct way. And I don't want my kids to feel like they can't go to the store. I don't want any other kids to feel like they can't go to the store. You know what I mean? I just want them to feel safe where they go to school. They shouldn't be scared right. to go learn. Right. No, I, I absolutely agree. And that's why we got on top of this uh, item uh, right. immediately, uh, because uh, certainly it's a very serious uh, situation. Um, right. 
police officer Atala? Yes. Um, do, you, do you have anything to add to? Um, it's. I read the uh, response that Captain uh, Gervin had sent. Uh, yes. You know, basically, yeah. I mean, you can you know, take it from there. It's just regurgitating what you 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 um already shared with everyone in regards to Detective Woods and the investigation and what Captain Gervin uh, said as well. Obviously. We're doing everything we can to try to keep everybody safe and, and do our part in, in um, keeping everybody safe without, you know, obviously feeling like we're hovering over everybody, right? A big, a big problem that we come across, and I don't know all of the details. Uh, I'm sorry for that. I don't, I don't know all of the details of every single uh, incident that has ha occurred. I do yeah. have a, a general idea of what's going on. Um, okay. So all I could tell you is that we're going to do our part to make sure that we, we keep everybody as safe as possible. We can't control how, how everybody feels about what's going on. Um, part of it is, you know, one of the tasks that we have is to make sure that everybody's safe without making them feel like we're watching and hawking over the children and the community itself. As people are aware, you know, we get a lot of uh, negative feedback when there is a lot of police presence around. And aside from that, we still try to do our jobs, but you got to remember, there's only a handful of us and there's a lot more kids running around. Anybody that's that's gone to any public school understands there's a lot of kids around. And a lot of times there's large groups of kids that are not doing anything, right? They're just kind of going home or just hanging out. They might even be play fighting and they're not really doing anything wrong. But a lot of times, you know, that might grab our attention. So we might go left and then something happens on the right. And we don't really have enough officers to cover every single block on every single corner for every single student that walks out of the schools. And there's multiple schools in the area. And that's not including the general crimes that might occur. So if we have two officers that are designated to that specific corner, right, of where the, the, you know, the incident occurred, and something happens down the block, they have to go. They can't stay there all day you know, or just wait for, for you know, things to happen there. So a lot of times that occurs too, you know, at, at three o'clock in the afternoon, as an example, that's one of the busiest times of the day for us, right? There's calls everywhere, there's, there's priorities all over the place. So we have to make a decision. We try to keep everybody as safe as possible while addressing the concerns of what's going on at the moment. Now, I'm not saying that every single day, that's what happens, you know, obviously there's different things that happen every day, but generally speaking, there are a lot more calls than there are police officers. And we try to address them as effectively as possible within, you know, within reason. And unfortunately, sometimes you might not see us standing on the corner. And I could tell you from experience, there's a reason for it. I don't know what the reason would be day to day because every day there's something different going on. You know, one arrest takes a long time. It's hours upon hours. So if we grab one person who, who committed a crime, we have to go back with them to the station house. It's not like they grab somebody who did something wrong, bring them to the station house and come right back. That officer is in the station house processing the arrest, contacting the parents if it's a, uh, an underage child. Depending on the criteria of, of, of the situation, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not as simple as, you know, just replace the body. You know what I mean? We, we, we don't have enough to cover every corner, every single person. Um, and I know that that may sound like an excuse, but that's the reality that we're working with. We're going to do our best to address it. Unfortunately, when something like this happens, it gets extra attention. And, and it, you know, that's that's just how things work. You know, we, we go to wherever the bigger issues are because we try to tackle the bigger issues, uh, you know, first. Right. Obviously, if it's, you know, something small going on, we address that whenever we can after the bigger issue is addressed. So that's just a general idea of what's going on. Anybody that wants to contact me, my information is out there. You know, if you guys need it, you know, uh, the community board has it, obviously. Our youth officers are aware of the situation right now. They're dealing with something else that's going on. You know, we're, we're doing our best to, to keep things a, a, as peaceful and as safe as possible. So you guys could always reach out to me, even if, I, if I'm home, you know, my wife gets upset with me. Sometimes I'll answer the phone at home, you know, but we all do what we can, you know, and, and just, just know that we are here. 
you, you know, tonight I, uh, they were supposed to be in the meeting and I, I was able to plug in, you know, I'm in the middle of something else, but I, I understand the importance of this matter. So I, I felt like I should, I should call in. If you have any questions, you could ask me now. I'm, I'm here for that reason. Um, Kendra, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. So I understand everything that you just said, because this is the same thing that the officer that I spoke to said that you guys are short of squad cars and you guys are short of, you know, the staffing and all of this. And I get that. I get it. God gave me one of Joshua and I don't want to be on the news crying that I lost my son. And then I have everybody coming for photo ops saying, oh, well, what? I, that's, that's where I'm at because yeah. I work. And I, I drop each and every one of my children off to school with the help of my sister. And during my work hours, I take my lunch to go pick up my children. Not all the children in that area are fortunate to have parents that can do such a thing, right? I keep hearing about these youth officers. Nobody has responded. Nobody has contacted me until I start contacting. I even went as far as saying I'm going to the media because I don't want the casualty. And then everybody's running in front of the place and we're making state. I don't want that. I don't well, even going understand. To the I don't even That's understand fine. that if okay. there was incidents before, whether from that school or different schools, why we are only getting COVID notices, but we're not getting notices about the safety of our children. Well, that's, well, that's something, something that, that the, the school has to do. Yeah. It, it's, it's something that the whole community needs to do because if the officers can't do it themselves because they're short staff and the manpower and everything else. And then, yes, I get it. I went, I went to Roosevelt. I, I was there when it was a bunch of menace. I was there when it was just one school. So I know there's many of us compared to the amount of officers. However, nobody wants to hear that when they're grieving over their child. I don't want to report something that happened to my child to hear that they, two weeks prior, somebody got their head busted and we weren't notified. I don't want to hear that. And well, I, I don't blame you. Um, Marty, staffing, you have your hand up. I wasn't done. Oh, if I'm it's sorry. too much with the staffing and the children, there may be we need to figure out another system because I don't feel safe. And yes, the, you guys may be handling another situation, but the very same boys that attack my children in the middle of the street where the butt underneath the subway, where the buses run, I'm running in the middle of the street. Cars could have hit me and I'm trying to pull these boys up off of my children. If I, one female was able to get them off of my children, I don't understand why police presence can't, hey, you guys move along, go home. That's what I see. That's what I saw when I was in school. Well, that's that's what happens now. I mean, it, it may not be happening with, with your son on a daily basis, but that, that's definitely happening every day now. I mean, it's just a matter of, again, it's not, I'm not even saying that we're short staffed because at the end of the day, regardless of the amount of staff we have, we're never going to have as many police officers as we have community members, right? I mean, that's just not ever going to happen, no matter how many police you have. The bottom line is this. We're doing our best to address the issues as best as we can with the personnel we have, regardless of how many we have. That's, that's you know, that's no excuse. It doesn't matter if we have 10,000 cops or, or 100 cops. We're going to do what we can to help the situation. You have to understand there are multiple agencies involved in this type of situation, right? You have the Board of Ed, you have the school safety with the NYPD along with them, right? So you have a couple of different things going on there. So as far as notifying you regardless uh, and regarding something that's happening within the school, that's one thing. And as far as our youth officers in the NYPD and the school safety agencies, that's two separate things working together, right? So right there, you have three, three entities working together, all right? Now, as far as we're concerned, if you need the information of the UICOs, we have it. I can give it to you. There's two of them that are currently here at the 50th Precinct. There's Officer Rodriguez and Officer James. They were the ones that were gonna be at this meeting, but as I said earlier, 
They had to go to an emergency situation and weren't able to come to this meeting tonight. Uh, that's why I'm here. I'm the community affairs officer. You could always reach out to me. We also have meetings with the community every second Thursday of the month that's open to, to the public. So if you have a, uh, something that, that you're concerned with that's going on, please come down to the meeting. Well, right now we're holding it a Zoom because of COVID and all that. So if you go on our website, if you call us, if you email us, we'll give the information for the meeting and you can just join in on Zoom just like you are now and you express what's going on and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk to you about it. And we have the community council that will be present as well. Just like right now you have the community board eight involved with, with what's going on right now. When we discuss these type of things, we could work on a plan. We could actually speak to you one-on-one -on -one and we could try to address the issue to try to help you as best as we can. But again, you know, we have two youth officers and how many thousands of kids are coming out of school every day, right? We also have the patrol officers who come around depending on what's going on. There's only a handful of officers that can help. That's why you have school safety agents. That's why you have uh, crossing uh, school crossing guards. That's why you have the, the Board of Ed doing, have their staff, you know, the teachers coming out and doing what they have to do. There, there's, there's a few different people that could help you a little bit and hopefully together we could all make it safe for everybody. Uh, Marty, uh, you have something to say? You have your hand up? Yeah, well, yeah first of all, I'm, I'm glad to hear, I think I've heard, that Joshua is well and still going to school. And that's the good part of the news, if that's the case. Uh, and the police have already uh, discussed on what their limitations are. But uh, what is the follow up with the schools? What are they doing to identify the youngsters and intervening um, to try and make sure from the school side, this doesn't happen again? The um, I spoke to the principal of uh, Bronx Engineering, and uh, he said that they had a meeting with the NYPD within the building because there are eight schools, and and they have uh, discussed the situation and they're on top of it. And again, like uh, police officer Salas says, they are doing the best they can, but uh, they are not dropping it, they are continuing to work uh, with the community to find a, a solution. I've not been able to speak to the new principal at um, uh, 368, uh, unbeknownst to me, the other one had uh, retired. So um, I will go try it again tomorrow to make him aware of it also. I don't know that he was in that meeting because that's a different building. So um, I want to make him aware of it also. His secretary knew nothing about this. I think that this is a, a situation that we take one step forward and maybe three back, but uh, we are trying to uh, reach out and, and do the right thing for the children. Certainly we all want them to be uh, healthy and, and well, and not in danger when they go to school. Uh, that should be a safe place for them. And uh, they have the um, police officers in the, the school uh, that keeps them safe at that point. And when they leave the building, um, hopefully we can find a solution to that also. Does anyone else have anything to say about it? And and also, uh, Kendra, uh, feel free to call me anytime or the community board. Uh, we want to be in the loop. Uh, we want to work with you um, to help this situation. So uh, please keep in touch. I will. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, uh, Paulette. Hi, yeah. dear. How are you? Hi, um, I'm Joshua's grandma and um, also Marcus. my yeah. I'm Marcus' grandma. And I hear exactly what the officers say. And I'm very concerned that, um, you know, after the incident happened, like Andrea said, 
these young people who stole the Marcus phone after jumping him, still call and threatening him. And then to hear that um, the kids is still hanging out in front of the very store where it happened. He also said they're gonna cut the tattoo off of him next time. And what they were saying is that when they catch them again, they don't ever have to worry about showing up to school. Now, as a grandmother, it is sickening to me. And I just heard the other day on the news and I have to say to the police that's on the phone, my condolences to his two brothers. He just lost, we heard one of the officer died today. The other one died on Friday. When we were growing up, they said it take a whole village to raise a child and it really does. And if these young people is still idling on the street corner and no one can say to them, cause I've heard that they have school guards and so forth. There wasn't any school guards out there that day when they jumped my grandchildren. These boys doesn't stay out. My daughters make sure it's school homework. They pick up some, um, some program basketball they pick up um, karate and so forth things. My grandson Joshua also work. These young people was out to try to strip him because one of the women said they tried to take his sneakers from him. Had not my daughter run there when she see the boy trying to run with it. Now, there is people that say to my grandson, you better start work walking with a knife and so forth. We don't want it to get to that point where he's never been in trouble before. And I would hate to see him walking to school with a knife because he's trying to defend himself and taking stuff out their pocket. I mean, don't we try to get in touch with the parents? How well, they have to be, they, they would have to be identified. They were identified. My daughter sent in some of the pictures of the same guys. And I sent the name and the school that they go to. I was myself waiting for the school or somebody to contact me to even have a meeting with the parents because maybe their parents don't know. That was, I, that, was, that, was that sent to uh, Mr. House? It was sent, no, so I was sending it to the officer because um, he told me any information, Mr. Woods, um, Detective Woods, I sent it to him and I believe it was the first officer, I have his name in my phone. I sent him the names of the, um, as I got information, I sent it to them. And then he, he just kept telling me that the um, two youth officers is working on it and they know who the children are. That was the last email I got from him. And then today I emailed him to follow up to see if there was any changes. And he said that, um, he sent me the email. I will have to go back in there, but it was very brief. But I did notify him which school they went to and where they live. I even gave him the number to one of the children that, um, knows he knows my son and he knows the boy that um started the altercation because they live in the same building and I gave him his phone number his information that young man said nobody contact him at all well and then... it's to the point where you know like this is the reason why I'm doing it this way is because it's already enough trouble and then you got kids that heard about it that's trying to you know encourage my son and my nephew well let's we'll go back and jump and I don't want the retaliation because I don't want nobody getting seriously hurt I don't want right. nobody you know what I mean if we yeah. can stop it the legal way the right way pick up these kids maybe their parents don't know call a meeting I'm trying to do it the right way and I'm explaining to my kids I got kids coming up to my son's and my nephew offering them weapons. And I don't want them carrying anything. I don't want them getting caught with nothing. I don't want them mixed up in this 
this is the reason why I try to keep them out of trouble. I try to keep them very busy, you know, so that they're not into stuff. I, you know, and I'm not saying my kids are angels. I'm sure they give these teachers a hard enough time with the chatting in school and stuff, but outside of school, I, I, I'm trying to keep it from where it is, because now I'm hearing that there's different gangs in that area. I don't want them feeling that my kids are affiliated with no gangs. So when I got this set of kids running up to my kids and offering them stuff, I don't want that. I'm trying to, you know, I, I, I grew up in the rough part of the Bronx, so I understand how it can be. Right. I'm trying to stay away from that because we have enough of that. And I'm tired of seeing these young kids either get, go into prison or end up dead. I'm trying to prevent it. That That was the reason why. I sent out, I, when all the t calls was coming in, I didn't know who was calling because I contacted the mayor's office. I contacted one for, I contacted Ed, the Bronx, Bar the news, anybody I thought would listen to shed light on this story because I, I wanted it to stop with my son and my nephew. I didn't want it to go any further. I don't want retaliation. I don't even want you know, it to be this big, I, even if we meet with the parents, let's figure out if the parents know. That That's where I'm at. Okay, Kendra, let me say something. Uh, there are two things that I think that you can do. Uh, okay. One is to work through with the with the principal. Uh, okay. if, if that child uh, that attacked your son is in the same school, uh, I don't know if they're from different schools. I don't know where yeah, they're from. Schools, so I think they're. Di I think each school in Kennedy have its own principal. Is that's what I true. was told. That is right. true. Uh, so that's the reason I spoke to Mr. House because your son goes to uh, right. uh, engineering. Um, yes. You have to get the information to the right principal of the right okay. school that the perpetrator uh, did what he did. Um, okay. Or you have to work through the youth uh, officers and, and just stick with that, or you could do both. Okay. But, but uh, you know, it, it, it unfortunately, no one can take this away from you and you're, you're doing a good job in, in shedding, shedding light on, on the situation, but um, we can't really do this for you. Right. Uh, we can give you time. We can get, you know, we can listen to you, uh, give you suggestions. But basically, um, the authorities have to be the ones that actually get these kids off the, the streets. Right. To stop them from doing this to the students, because this time it was your son and your nephew. Next time it'll be somebody else's son. That's, that's what I'm trying to prevent. If I, if anybody can just give me, send me the information of the youth officers. I keep hearing about the two. I haven't been in contact, that, in contact with them yet. Um, um, if anybody can just send me the information because I'll talk to whoever I can talk to. I'll network or whoever I can network. Well, the, if I the two, the work, two uh, officers, uh, the youth officers that were supposed to come tonight were probably mm -hmm. the ones that you should get in touch with. And that's police yeah, that, officer I James mm -hmm. and uh, police officer Rodriguez. Rodriguez. And if you James. call the 50th precinct, I'm sure that you'll be able to um, get in touch with them. Rodriguez. Is that right, uh, police officer Sala? Yes, if, if she has, if you have an email, I could email you the information as well. Please. Yes, um, I'll send my email into the chat. Um, we don't have a chat. Oh, okay. But you I'm could sorry. send it into the office if you like. Office. We the, the community board. Have, office. Do you have a pen, um, Officer Sala? Do you have a pen? I can give it to you now. Okay, so it's K E Y N yeah. as in Nancy. Yeah. K E Y nine one zero at yahoo dot com. So it's key and key 910 at yahoo.com. Okay, I'll take care of that tonight. All right, thank you. No problem. Um, Madam Chair, Sylvia, um, um, Myra has a hand up, sorry. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I was so busy listening over mm -hmm. there. I'm and sorry. I also have a okay. question after Myra as well. Thank you. Okay. 
uh, um, Myra? Yeah, so I'm, no, I'm just thinking that um, I think that we can bring this up or I can bring it up since I'm vice chair of the public safety committee um, at our next meeting, as, you know, just basically also to put this on our radar and to know that- uh, this It is on, on uh, uh, I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Laura spoke to Ed Green about it already. Okay. Oh, great. But you can bring it up at your meeting anyway. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank uh, you. Ramda. Hi, Sylvia. Um, so I, as you know, I also grad, I graduated from the Kennedy campus from one of the schools. Um, when when I was a student there, I was part of the the building safety committee. Um, so I was wondering if we can follow up with the building safety committee and figure out, you know, what are their next steps or plans moving forward to prevent things like this from happening. Um, but it didn't yeah. happen in the building. Okay. You, oh, you're okay. saying that the building committee. Gotcha. No, I, I, all right, perfect. No yeah, yeah. They're smart enough not to do it in school. But thank you for that. Um, Kira, uh, Kendra, I'm sorry. Uh, have we covered it, uh, the topic for you? Um, yes, that's fine. I'll be in touch with Mr. House and then um, I'll look out for the email for the two youth officers and I'll be in touch with them as well. Right. And and sometime when you have a little free time, let me know how it's going. Okay. Because I'd like to be informed. Okay. I'll definitely keep you in the loop. Uh, okay, Madam, great. Madam Thank Chair. you so much. Madam Sebastian Chair, has his hand up. Yep. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Sebastian. Yeah, I just have a question to the officer. Do we know how many incidents of similar nature took place around that campus recently? I'm sorry. No, what? <clears throat> how many incidents of similar nature took place around that campus in the, like, uh, in the uh, last couple of the, months? In the last couple of months, no, I don't, I don't know. Um, over the last couple of months. Actually, I, I really don't know. I, I don't want to give you wrong information. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, the YCOs would have uh, that information readily available. Um, I, I could find out also if, um, if you want to reach out to me as well. Um, but basically, it's not, it, it's, it's something that during the, the warmer months, that's usually a, a more a, of an issue. Uh, during the colder months, it's not usually as much of a problem. I could say that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Well, thank you very much for coming uh, this evening uh, to uh, pinch it for the youth officers. Uh, we appreciate well, your being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that takes care of that. Um, Um, as far as the chairman's report um, goes, um, there isn't really too much that I can tell you. Uh, the only thing that I can um, is that the SCA was contacted by our uh, um, uh, district manager and um, we asked to be part of the um, environmental review when that happens. And the um, district manager spoke to the real estate attorney for the SCA and uh, was told that right now they're kind of in um, a recess uh, because of the holidays and everything else. They'll start again soon and uh, they will uh, look into the environmental uh, review, which takes care of traffic and and other things, um, and it, that report should be ready. Uh, and then they hire a contractor to um, do this uh, review, um, and it should be uh, completed during April or May. Uh, it goes to the uh, city council for a vote in June. And um, as far as the site selection is concerned, 
and the um, uh, the lawyer for the real estate uh, said that she would be happy to answer any questions and also to come to another meeting uh, after that is completed. So what we're going to do, because we don't really trust uh, school construction authority too much, is to keep in touch with them and to monitor where they are in the process so that if we can possibly do it, we will have a meeting so that we can have some input into um, what they're doing. So um, that really takes care of that. As far as the, uh, I have discussion of the budget uh, for 2023. Um, the uh, David is on the uh, on the, on the Zoom. I thought that we would have some responses from uh, OMB uh, Office of Management and Budget by this time, so that we would know where we're going with our items from 2023. Um, unfortunately, they are delayed with that, so we have not received it yet. Uh, David has sent an email saying that he. Uh, thinks that maybe uh, before the executive board, which is uh, February 2nd and our uh, general meeting, perhaps that will uh, uh, appear and uh, we will have that then. So we will be able to go ahead uh, and, and uh, look at that, see what we have gotten. We have really gotten a lot of um, help from uh, Eric Dinowitz, the city council person. Um, and uh, hopefully they, the OMB is also going to help us with some of the needs of the schools. Um, we will be discussing the budget priorities for 2024 over the next few months. And it's due to be um, completed by uh, and given to David by April 20th uh, each year. I assure him that it will be done then, but we do our uh, budgeting uh, differently than most of the other uh, committees because we do not make the decisions for the schools. We send out a letter asking them for what they need. That takes time. And then we, we look at those letters. And by the time April 20th is uh, here, we have an answer to give to David. So David, you know that routine and I hope that's satisfactory. Uh, yeah, no, uh, you, you've always managed, uh, give or take a, a day or three, you, you've always managed to get it there on time. Well, that's uh, because our meeting is at the end of the month. No, no, I understand. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. It's a, it's a target because you know, the whole point is to get everything collated uh, that week as well from all the other committees. So that, that's target. I would just, you know, encourage uh, you and your committee just to simply think about things you might want to do, which may or may not come from the principals and the PTAs or may, but uh, the whole point of the process is that uh, at this point, the committee members should be creative uh, in their thoughts. And then, you know, in your February meeting, start tossing around ideas. And I'm not going to, you know, tell you what, what they should be, but you can have uh, new ideas or or want to follow up on old ideas or what have you. Uh, but you know, you should be able to come up with some preliminary priorities um, next month, and then think about in the March meeting, you know, actually prioritizing uh, the the lists uh, for the capital and for the expense, and then in April give or take a couple of days, depending on, you know, all those issues that we've talked about in the past, um, you know, aiming for April 20th to have a uh, agreed upon list coming out of the committee. The, these are targets. These are not absolutes. I mean, it, it, hell, if we're talking about absolutes, OMB has already failed because they are required to present the information to us by uh, January 15th. Obviously that's passed. And as I noted, with a new administration, I anticipate that this delayed list will probably be even more delayed. Uh, yet we are still required to 
have a comment on it uh, by, I think, February 15th. So these are all like forewarnings of, you know, uh, others are going to be late, but we've got to be ready nonetheless. I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Any questions for David? Seeing none, I will continue. Um, the next thing that I have is the mitzvah project. Um, Myra, do you want to explain uh, the mitzvah project and I'll go into what we've done? Um, yeah, I think that we already spoke about it here, but I'll just give a, a little recap. Well, just I'll be refresh. Good for you to repeat it. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> Roger Grunwald, who is an actor and a, um, an activist, um, has quite some time ago, his parents were, or his mother was um, a Holocaust survivor. Um, so he has produced this, this program um, called The Mitzvah Project, and it's a one-man show. And um, it basically, I mean, the, the, the sort of show part of it is, is him enacting um, what happened in concentration camp, but he puts, um, he puts a, a spin on it that sort of makes it um, entertaining, I guess is probably not a good word for young people. I saw, if he did it five years ago at um, Manhattan College and it was really exceptional. After, after the video part of it, cause he's doing it on Zoom now, he's in California. Um, we, he has a question, a Q and A, um, and there's always there's always students who have questions about it. He's been doing it in high schools. He did it in Brooklyn. Um, he's doing it in high schools all over the country. So what we are hoping for is is to have him do it in one or both of our high schools here in the community board. Uh, I have to add that um, recently there have been uh, many anti-Semitic uh, uh, occurrences. Uh, the UN just uh, voted on Thursday to um, uh, approach the, the the theory of um, th that uh, it didn't happen. It's denial. Um, 114 countries. Uh, voted for this uh, resolution, and uh, the only um, country that uh, voted against it was uh, Iran. So uh, it, it is a, a wide worldwide situation. Um, we talk about uh, racism in, in all kinds of different situations, uh, but we don't address that although it is part of the curriculum of social studies in um, uh, the World War II uh, segment. And uh, we think that, uh, well, the committee also thought that uh, it would be something that would be uh, illuminating for the children to see that, that there are other racisms that are uh, not, um, a minority, uh, you know, fueled uh, black or or Latino. Um, it, it is also something that happened to six million uh, Jews that were exterminated uh, in uh, this uh, Holocaust. So um, Myra, uh, Myra has uh, gotten in touch with uh, Mr. Greenwald, and he is willing to speak to the. Uh, principles of uh, 368, and uh, I had thought in uh, it should be in a high school situation. So uh, I had suggested 368 and 141 um, RKA, and um, he is willing to do that. And my next step is to get in touch with the principals, send them uh, a video that I have that uh, Mr. Greenwald had uh, uh, made. And I got it from uh, Myra and uh, it's very um, interesting. I think that the kids would uh, 
learn a lot from it. And um, that's what the uh, I'm going to do on behalf of the committee. Uh, any questions on that? Yes, Ramon. Um, if you need help with 141, just let me know. I work. What? In the if you need help with 141, just let me know. I work in yeah, the no, I, I think that uh, Ms. O'Mara would be uh, willing to uh, look at the uh, video and uh, I don't know if she wants then to have the social studies person, an AP or whoever is in charge of the uh, social studies, perhaps they have to also okay it, I don't know, but um, I'm going to speak to her and see what, how she wants to handle it. But I know you're there, so <laughs> you're on the job. Uh, Rhonda teaches there. Yeah, Rita. Rita? Yes? Oh, okay. Sounds like a great idea. Would community members be able to attend as well, or just students? I mean, it sounds um, like something I would be. This is only in. for the students, really. I mean, it, 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 there's no reason why we can't uh, see it uh, also, but. Right, because I would be interested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Myra, keep I me have to find that out. Okay. Uh, the, the thing with the schools, and Ramdad had brought it up the last uh, time we discussed it, is that they have 45 minute periods, and this runs longer. So uh, he, uh, Mr. Greenwald would have to adjust it or do it in an auditorium sit setting or you know, do something different because the, the, he did it at Brooklyn Tech. I don't know how they did it. They would also have the 45 minute period. So I don't really know what the situation was there. That's why I thought it was more important for Mr. Greenwald to speak to the principals and work that logistics out. But uh, I will keep you in mind as far as uh, seeing it. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. Anybody else? Okay. Um, library report. Peter, I see that you are here. Are you still here? Yes, you are. I see you. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. And what's new in your Van Cortland Park library? Well, not much. Peter um, is the manager of the Van Cortland branch. Library. Van Cortland right. Arlene Schwartzman Building. That's our full name now. So there's not much to Sorry, report. Van Cortland uh, what? Arlene Schwartzman Building. The Forget mother of Stephen H. Schwartzman. So Stephen A. Schwartzman, who's a benefactor to the library, um, wanted to honor his mom, who lived in our area for many years before moving to Philadelphia and having him. Um, so we renamed our building in honor of his mother, who was a person who really advocated for education and literacy. So our we're still a Van Cortland Library, Arlene Schwartzman Building. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I was unaware of that. That's great to know. Thank you. We, we, we've had the name since November, about November. So essentially, the library has paused programming, in-person programming because of the COVID surge um, until at least February 1st. Um, it could go longer. We're still um, working on details and, and, and observing, you know, the surge and how things are going in the city. There should be some updates soon on whether or not the pause will continue. Uh, we continue to provide virtual programming. Uh, we have uh, children's uh, bilingual read aloud schedule for this Friday tentatively if we get a lot of people who to sign up. We'll continue to have virtual programs even if our in-person programming is still paused. Um, patrons can still come into the branch and use it as normal. It's just that we don't have physical programs because of spacing at this time. But you can still use a computer. You can still check out books. You can still study and use the branch as normal. It's just no in-person programming right now. That's pretty much the only update I have for you guys. Great. 
Uh, we met uh, the new uh, manager of uh, Spite and Dival at our last meeting. Maria. Um, and she, um, in, in my minutes, I said that it was open for in-person, but by that time it didn't happen anymore. So it was vir uh, virtual. Uh, you don't know from one day to the next what's gonna happen. So um, anyway, um, virtual is the way to go right now. Yeah, hopefully soon it will stop. Okay. Um, is there anything that anyone wants to bring up as to old business or new business? I, I took things uh, kind of in, in uh, disorder uh, because that uh, issue from the school should have been under new, more, new uh, business, but I felt that they wanted to get the story out and uh, I let them talk first. Okay, no questions whatsoever. All right then I guess that we're going to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A second. Anyone second? Second. I second. Okay. And um, anyone against? Would you want to stay, stay <laughs> here for a while? <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much for all uh, of you to have joined, and um, I hope we'll see you again soon, and stay well. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Over here. Good night. Yeah. Oh, was it, was it Mr. Seltzer who retired? Yes. Oh, really? I didn't even know. Wow. Yeah. I There's a David good. Weisberg there now. Really? I thought he was I don't know who he is. Meetings. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hope you